I've split this one into two parts. So this time I'm going to look at pressure. Okay, so this is solids, liquids, and gases, and this time I want to look at pressure. Okay, and so hopefully remember that pressure equals force divided by area. Now then, force is measured in newtons, and area should be measured in meters squared. So that means pressure can be measured in pascals. Now. Area is not always given in meters squared, in which case you could give it as newtons per centimeter squared, for example, but it should really be given in newtons per meter squared, which is pascals. Now, because it's area, like we talked about a volume before, where there's a million centimeters cubed in a meter cubed, with area, because there are just two dimensions to it, if you look at area, if we have one meter squared, there are a hundred centimeters by 100 centimetres, so therefore 100 times 100 is 10,000 centimetres squared. So if you, if you are converting from centimetres squared and metres squared, remember there are 10,000 centimetres squared in a metre squared. Again though, it's easier if you convert into metres when you are calculating the lengths, when you are looking at the lengths, if you change these into meters, it makes the calculations more straightforward. So typical examples to do with uh, pressure might be, if for example we took a coin, and we could say our coin has a mass of 50 grams. And the coin, very small coin, has a radius equal to, say, 1.2 centimetres. Now, we, from that we can work out the area of the base of this coin. Because the area, we remember, is pi r squared. So it's quite easy to calculate the area of this. So a question could be something like, calculate the pressure exerted on the ground by a stack of such coins where we have maybe 10. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we've got 10 of these coins stacked on top of each other. And we might have to work out what is the pressure exerted on the ground beneath here? Now, there are different ways to go about this, but really we should do it in pascals. So therefore, I want everything in um, metres squared. So, if I take my calculator, I can see that my area is 1.2 centimetres. Now, 1.2 centimetres needs to be in meters. So we know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So if we divide 1.2 by 100, we will see that it's 0.012 meters. So the area is pi times 0.012 squared, because it's pi r squared. So the area of coins in contact with the ground here is pi r squared, which is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. So we know that the area is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. So area equals 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. Now then, I now need to work out the force, because pressure is force divided by area. Now, we know we've got 10 of these coins. Now, if each coin is 50 grams and we've got 10 of them, then the mass will equal 10 times 50 grams, and that equals 500 grams. But I want this in kilograms, so that's 0.5 kilograms. But we also need to remember 
if we've got a 0.5 kilogram stack of coins, the force, the weight of this is mg. So it would be 0.5 times 10, which is 5 newtons. So the force exerted on the ground is 5 newtons. Now, as pressure is force divided by area, the force was 5 newtons, the area was 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4, and that gives us 11,052 newtons per metre squared. Okay? Now then, there are other questions on pressure, such as um, pressure difference. Now there's an equation for pressure difference using a, a formula called H rho G. So pressure difference equals height times rho times G. Now let me just go over what these mean. Pressure difference is in Pascal's. Height, H is for height, which is measured in meters. Rho is the density of the liquid or the gas, which is um, uh, kilograms per meter cubed. And G is gravitational field strength, which we know is um, 10 newtons per kilogram or 10 meters per second squared. So this equation, pressure difference, is H rho G. Very important equation. So if we think about a problem such as this, imagine we have a pipe. And the pipe contains water. The water is higher on one side than the other. Now normally water will find an equilibrium and it will be the same height. Now because this is not the same height, let's say this one here is say 20 centimetres higher than this one here. Here we've got a height difference. So therefore there must be a greater pressure here than there is here. Now in the question obviously it would explain this in detail. It would say this is um, this is open air. Now one thing that is worth remembering all the time is that typically we are living at a, with a pressure of a hundred thousand pascals. A hundred kilopascals. That's atmospheric pressure. So it's safe to assume then that there are a hundred thousand pascals on here. Now that means that there's a pressure difference here. So the pressure here must be higher in order to raise this water by this amount. Now if we use the equation, pressure difference is H rho G. All we do is we can find out what is the pressure here at X. So for example, pressure difference is H rho G. Height is 0.2 because it must be in meters. Now the density of water will be given in a question. It is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So it'd be a thousand times G, which is 10. So we've got 2000 Pascals. Now that's not the answer. The pressure here is not 2000 Pascals. The pressure difference is 2000 Pascals. And because this must be atmospheric pressure of 100,000 Pascals, this must be 102,000 pascals. So pressure difference questions, you work out the pressure difference, but if you're asked to find the absolute pressure, you must add this to the initial pressure in order to find the pressure difference. Now there are lots of questions that you could be asked about pressure. One such as pressure difference, um, you could, would be expected to know that pressure is the same everywhere in a liquid. So for example, if you were given piston here, no. If we 
had a shape like this, which contained two pistons. If we push this one with a force, now let's imagine this is a circular shape, and inside the circular shape it contains a liquid such as water. Now if we push it with a force of say 100 newtons, now let's say that the area of this here, the area is say, so it's a really big area, so we'll say it's half a metre squared. So if we're pushing with a force of 100, a very small force of 100 newtons, and with it over, a four, over an area of 0.5 metres squared, we're exerting a pressure on the liquid. Now pressure is force over area, is 100 divided by 0.5, which is 200 pascals. So the pressure in the liquid is now 200 pascals, and that pressure pushes equally in every single direction, and equally it pushes on here. Now if we were given the area of this, we would be able to work out what the force out is. So for example, if the area of this was just 0.1 meters squared, we could find out what the pressure is, sorry, the force is, because force is pressure times area, the force is the pressure, which is the same everywhere, and that's the essence of this question. The pressure is the same everywhere, so it's 200, times the area, which is just a fifth of that, 0.1, and therefore the force on this side, 200 times 0.1, is 20 newtons. So pushing here on this big area with a force of 100 newtons would create a force of 20 newtons on this side. Now typically this system is used in order to create, it's normally used as a force magnifier where we push in the other side in order to create a larger force on the opposite side. But all we're using is the principle that you create a pressure, the pressure is the same everywhere, therefore you can calculate a force elsewhere. All we're doing is using the same equation, pressure is force over area.